Baby. We need to get this cat off me. No. Not the other cat, too. Are you, are you coming, low? Oh, bye, Milo. All right. All right, guys. So, April will be here in a second. We are... Can you grab us some waters before? I'll yeah, take that from you. What? I thought you were going to go grab us waters. Oh. <laughs> um, these are the clothes we're giving away. All right. So, what'd you work on today, baby? Oh, let me let me do the traditional. A little bit of everything. What does that mean? <laughs> it means I went over some notes and in some JavaScript, and it also means that I worked on my portfolio. So, um, I got a. I'm struggling with the paragraph section because it should be really easy. Uh, <laughs> the paragraph section? Yeah, so like I'm trying to get in some. On the example, it has like the menu. I have the menu, it works, it functions. And then underneath it is the guy's picture and a little bit of about me thing. And I cannot get the words to show up. I don't. <laughs> do, you, do you want to. No. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't want to dive into that. No. Okay. Well, don't spend too much time on it because it's probably something small. Yeah. And if you can't solve it tomorrow, let me know and I'll take a look at it. Okay. All right. So we'll continue on our JavaScript adventure. That was it. Thank you, by the way. Um. Yeah. I mean, that's all we've been doing. Okay. Cool. So, um, to continue on, guys, welcome everybody. Jordan, David. Manu Aurora Vapor Code. Thank you, man. Uh, April and I recently went through uh, my closet. Gonna get rid of, donate some old clothes, donate uh, some stuff. The Sin shirt made the cut, but she always says I wear the same four shirts, so now we're recycling them forward. So you guys are gonna see a whole new attire. Um, it's basically gonna be the same shirt, different shirt. But. <laughs> <laughs> same theme, just different. And James, yeah, yeah. No, no. Now, fuck James. No, I'm just kidding, James. Uh, and Russ, welcome, welcome. Um, all right. <clears throat> so, uh, have I seen the free Code Camp shirts? I have, although I believe that free Code Camp sh shop is closed right now. They don't have a shop anymore. Uh, see, I think they're reworking it. Someone told me. And this one doesn't doesn't go in it to anything. The new Dylan. Yeah, I'm 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 born again. The door's open. Come in. Meow. Kelly's push. Meow. Does he not know he can push the door open? Please. I don't know. Come on, buddy. You can do it. Hi. Push the door open. Come on. <laughs> well, yeah. There you go, just like the bathroom door. Oh, there you go. Good boy. All right. <laughs> a little bit of a struggle there. As Free Code Camp changed its design, this is the beta that we're learning on because there's more stuff and it's not identical to what she'll be doing. Um, and this is really meant to be a lecture slash introduction. Um, and uh, that's why we're doing the beta. This is uh, their dark theme. All right, so... <laughs> come to the dark side. <laughs> so what we're basically looking at here in this ver in this array is an array with an object... array with a single object in it. And what's going on here is... It's basically trying to show you that you can create... You can store... First, you can store complex objects into arrays. And you can store arrays within that object. Okay. Um, hey, David, I'll answer your question towards the end. Yeah. Um, 
Make sense so far? You remember how objects work and use key value pairs? So let's say we wanted this artist. We'd actually have to target the index, and then we could call the dot artist. So if we said my music index zero dot artist, it would return Billy Joel. Yeah, okay, I remember. All right, cool. So in this, we're going to add a new album to my music. So in index two, and we'll just go ahead. Sorry, can, can your arm is like pushing my arm. No. I can't type or use the mouse. <laughs> All right, so we want to add another object. Remember, objects are denoted with the curly braces, and they have the key value pairs in it. And in here, what we're going to do is we're simply going to add an artist. And remember, this is the key. And then for the value, what do you want the artist to be? Or they tell us? Dolly. D O O L Y? No, oh, Dolly. Hmm? <laughs> what? The, is that the is that the museum we went to? Yeah. Is that D H A L I? D A L I. D A L I. All right. <laughs> All right, and then we're going to add the title. What is the title? We'll say Lincoln pick. Or we'll just say Lincoln, whatever the Lincoln that Lincoln photo was, and then um, release year. And so this would be this would actually be a, a relatively realistic way that you would in this case we're talking about albums but you could see how if you want to return all the albums from a search result it might come back in this way in an array of objects with multiple pieces of info for each index and so a release here we'll say 2000 and then finally um, and a formats array of strings so in this case formats and you'll see we'll throw in an array of strings and we'll say um, I don't know dy I guess we'll just throw two in there and let's go ahead and run this and so what do we do? should can contain release year which is a number whoopsies so because it's in quotes it's a string right mm. but all we did here was add so if we wanted to get this See, entire object... It's, it's shit like that that fucks me up. I just don't know. Don't know what? What you just said. Well, okay. It's well. just it's just annoying. There's nothing that you can teach me other than you sit there and help me memorize every single thing. Well, no. Uh, it, David, that is what's most frustrating me. <laughs> Uh, when it comes to learning the ins and outs of a language, it takes time. And also, a key skill that a lot of junior developers or people who are trying to be junior developers um, need to obtain by struggling through it is the ability to problem solve their own bugs as well as to see them when they're right in front of them, right? Yeah. Cool. You can also access any sort of nested object. So you see we have an object within an object. Mm -hmm. Within an object. Object, uh, object, object, object. And you can do that in various ways. So, uh, Why would you have objects like that? Um, is it, just it, depends, like it depends how complex the how data is. How specific it is? So like, let's take our hand. Our hand's an object, and then we say, okay we have five fingers right so then we have fingers and so that's you got, your hand has a finger object and then you have five objects in there and each finger has a bone uh, multiple bones so then you have bones and that object that lists all the bones and then I thought you could just list those out um, well it's all related to the one main object in this case car so the car on the inside we have a glove box and a passenger seat on the outside we have a trunk mm -hmm. and so it, it really is about uh, just um, the more you know, the four fingers, one thumb object. There you go, Russ. See? 
You guys are too clever. All right, so in this case, if we wanted to get the uh, glove box object, we could do that very easily by calling my storage. And what do you think? It, knowing what you know with how objects and the keys work, how would we, what would we go to get? I don't recall how to write it, but it would just be, uh... Dot? Remember, there's dot notation and there's, oh, there's and bracket the notation. So let's, let's do dot notation, because that's more likely. I thought that was not the likely. No, that's more the likely. No, the likely. No, no, usually you'll do it like this. So if, say we wanted, uh, my storage is the whole, is the outside. Okay. And we go deep deeper and we say car then we say dot inside that car dot glove oh my god actually we can't do it like this because there's a space I'm thinking JSON objects this is an, a different object I'm sorry I didn't mean to confuse you here um, glove box use dot and bracket notation to access my storage What's this glove box? Oh, they want us to combine the two. Okay, I see that. So we can do it. We can actually combine the two. So car dot inside. And normally, if this was one word, you could use dot notation. So this is two words. We can do something like this, where we combine dot notation and ob and um, bracket notation. So my storage is the variable. The key that we're looking for, the object, is car. The object within car is inside, and the key that we're trying to get is glove box. So now we're taking dot notation and bracket notation and going from there. So uh, you can access the arrays, the objects in an array that has its own array as well, if we wanted the value there. So in this case, they want us to retrieve the second I a variable from my plants using dot notation. So my plants, uh, the second tree from the variable my plants. The fuck is the second tree? Is this one? All right. So retrieve the second tree variable my plants using object dot and array bracket notation. Oh okay. yeah. So if we wanted to remember my plants is an array, right? And we know that arrays have indexes and we can target those index indexes with numbers. So how, what would be the, if we wanted to target this value here, we wanted to get that second index, what would be the number that we would want in my plants? One. Good. And then if we wanted to retrieve pine, what using dot or bracket notation, we'll say dot, what, did, what would be the first thing that we would do? Good. And so one thing to remember, so if in case you get confused, just remind yourself where you're at in the second before here. So my plants were right here. And then we say, okay, list, where have where are we now? And now we're here. Now using uh now what's list? It's an array. Mm -hmm. And we said we want pine. So how would we get there? What would be the index? Pine. No, the index. Because it's an array. We use brackets in it. Oh. So yeah, don't. One. Yeah. Good. And now we have what this variable is set to. Second I, tree is pine. Oh. Okay. So those are arrays with objects in it. Yes. It's this is a variable okay, that is an array. Okay. And so you have to call the objects with the dot list and the arrays with the. Well, you can combine brackets. Yeah. So you can combine bracket notation and dot notation. Okay. <coughs> so this is a hard one for people. Great. <laughs> um, this is it might be easy for me. <laughs> this is one where you put it all together also. Um, write a function to, that takes an album's ID so they have, they have, they give us an, this is our example collection, right? So this is one artist. The first lost, uh, 
Array start at index zero, James, if that's what you're asking. So the first value would be index zero. The second value would be index one. JavaScript is a zero. I forgot the rest of it. I wrote it down on my notes. <laughs> first list yeah zero that is correct okay uh, uh yeah do it again uh, uh, all right so use bracket up to what does it want us to do i wish i would just put this shit in bold so i could see it because i don't need to read this bullshit all right uh <laughs> it's too much to read uh Yeah, you got it, man. Uh, all right, so um, write a function which takes an album ID. Okay. Usually it starts at the bottom now. Yeah, it's right here. It takes album ID, like 2548, a property part like artists or tracks, and a value to modify the data in the collection. If prop isn't in tracks and value isn't empty, update or set the value for the record album's property. Your function must always return the entire collection object. So what we're doing is we are first checking the collection, right? Mm. And so we're saying, are we assuming the ID exists? Okay, we'll, so we'll assume the ID exists. And the prop is what, artist? So when you say we assume the ID, that's not the ID you're talking about? What ID? That one right there. This one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll say var uh, val is equal to uh, collection dot id. And so what we're doing is we're passing in this number and it's going to retrieve it. Actually, let's just use bracket notation. This will make life a little easier. And so there we go. So that's our value. So if it exists, we're going to get our collection. The next thing that we need to do, and you see how I'm breaking out in like piece by piece, right? Don't get overwhelmed by the problem. Instead, tackle each little piece. At how do you get problems at work? Like, how do you get instructions? What do you mean? At work. You don't get instructions. <laughs> there's, no okay. inst there's no instructions. It's hard. <laughs> There's no like, hey, here's this unique web application instruction. It's, I am literally architecting it. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant. Like, like what it, does my boss tell me to do? Yeah. Like my. He, he's just like, hey, I want this layout. Make it happen, or. Um, my boss. This is something. Maybe we should talk about this at, at the end. Okay. This, is a, this is a long answer. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, because... A long answer to give you the right answer. Because you're say. saying, you're telling me, take it in little bits, but that's not real world. Yeah, but you're, you're, not, in, you're not in a real world skill set yet. But, yes, but, it, but, but the, I the, the headed there. I know, but the, 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 the concept is the same, depending on where you're at. So. I was just curious, okay. It's kind of like writing revisions redrafting and a lot of prep work if you're to do it beforehand and that prep work isn't something that free code camp will teach you but i will teach you which is why i like doing these as well to give you real life co uh, context okay. okay so um we're tracking we're doing piece by piece right write a function that function is already written if prop isn't in track so the next thing we have is prop and we say if we can do a little if statement it says if Um, remember we have the has own property? Remember that function for an array? Mm -hmm. Or an object? Uh, let's see. Uh, well, in this case, we have val. So we're storing this in a val. Okay. A variable, which stores the entire thing. So don't get confused by this, because now we're just chaining variables. And we're going to say, hey, if, does this exist? If it does, it's going to return true. Oh, I remember. Okay. Okay. And 
if it's property if prop <gasps> addicted to love yeah 10 percent of my boot camp <laughs> it's done uh <laughs> a lifetime of boot camp i imagine 10 percent of the tutoring sessions are will be done today um at the end of the day what i'm really hoping is to uh, put in the daily coding spirit and grind and have april make a part of her lifestyle um so you know so here we we say hey does this value exist does this prop exist in this case it's artist is there an artist if there is if prop isn't if prop wait so if the prop isn't tracks oh so if it is not equal equal to tracks we can get rid of the prop. We're actually saying, hey, uh, we want to check the value of prop. And we're saying, look, if it's not equal, equal to tracks. If prop isn't tracks and the value. <laughs> and the value. I haven't played with them all day. We can play with them after this. Sorry, buddy. No. No, we got work. Come here. We'll play with you. All right. All right. So, uh, red function text album. If prop isn't tracks, meaning the value isn't tracks, and the value isn't empty, update or set the value for the al record album property. Update or set the value. If prop isn't tracks, and. value is not equal equal to an empty string Achilles <laughs> get out of the way don't yell at him he's just a baby he's two years old baby he's a baby <laughs> two years old's like teenage he's no longer retarded all right um I don't know about that <laughs> he's a special kitty all right and it isn't empty, update or set the value for the record album's property. So what's happening here is we're saying, hey, um, first store that object. Secondly, check to see if our prop is equal to tracks. Or is if prop isn't tracks, is not equal to tracks. And the value is not equal to zero, this property. If this is a true statement, if both those things are true, what we want to do is we want to target, we want to say val dot tracks dot push. Remember what push does? Yeah. What does push do? Uh, adds it to, adds to the end. Adds to the end of what? A string. No of a list oh uh an array good push adds the what you're trying to add to the end of the array so what our logic here is saying is if it's not equal to tracks if this value is not equal to tracks and our value is an em isn't an empty string we want you to go ahead and on the one that we've stored remember we've stored one of these objects we want to push to the tracks array I think that's it. <laughs> Can I read property push on the fine? God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. It just makes him feel so much less godly in this sense. So you actually yeah, get to like this. see him. Like, that should have worked. He's a good teacher. He's very, he's been very patient, which I have not. So, let's go and refresh this. Something had weird happened on here. How could it? You hadn't even set it. You haven't even run it with that. I know. So, we have our collection. Using bracket notation. We're going to, we're going to get rid of the bracket notation, see if that makes a difference.
right, so cannot read property push of undefined. So for some reason, my ID is returning back undefined. So maybe they didn't have a pre-existing ID. Uh, like you assumed it didn't. No, no, it does right here. So 5439. 5439. I wonder, so these are strings. So maybe the, oh, okay, okay, okay. I see what's going on here. So what's going on is we are passing in a number and it's expecting a string. So what we can do instead of, we can do dot ID. And let's try this one more time. Is an ID an object itself? No, the ID here, you should be able to access bracket notation either way. Can I read property push of undefined? Hmm. ID dot track. So if, if prop is not equal to tracks and the value is not equal to zero, take our collection oh collection is a giant object that's right and we say dot id dot tracks dot push and then push that value so here i'll show you let's try this what we're gonna do where's my code it's over to the side we are going to console dot log uh, collection dot id dot tracks and see if we get a value we run our test so it's not hitting that refresh this real quick so it's never hitting this and let's console.log test because if it's returning undefined it's not going to console log shit sometimes test test so it runs twice it doesn't hit this so we're going to start doing this piece by piece so instead what we want to do is console.log um, id cool 5439 Let's try it one more time. So and you see how I'm breaking it down piece by piece trying to find where our bug is or where our error in logic is, whatever you want to call it, dot ID. Undefined, undefined, okay. So let's try it here. So now that worked. You see how we're having our 5439 is returning an album. Oh, motherfuckers. All right. So, we can't push to the. I see, I see the air. Uh, we made the assumption, and this is, this is a good example of why you should never make the assumption. I made the assumption that the tracks array here existed. Now, um,. The reason that this is important is the reason our code failed was because we're pushing a value that doesn't exist. We can't push to an array that doesn't exist. So what we can do is within here, we can say if uh, collection.id is uh, id dot has own property tracks go ahead and add that value else um, we're going to add we're going to say the collection dot id dot tracks is equal to an empty array and then we're going to push that value oops I believe that should do it and let's go ahead so what this is doing is saying hey is it not equal to tracks and is the value that we want to add uh, exists is it not empty and if this has the tracks array 
if that property exists, mm -hmm. we want to go ahead and we want to push that value to it because it's an array. If it doesn't exist, go ahead and create that array and then push the value to it. Mm. So just a little bit of logic. Can I read property has some the hell is as a property? Is it not capitalized? Can I revalue has on property? Alright, so let's try this. Show you a little bit more. Well, in, in console debugging here, free code camp version. All right, so console.log collection ID. And so let's run our test. So we get that. And so we want to say collection. Collection. ID. Can we, no. Collection ID dot has has own property tracks. Let's see what happens when we run that. False, false. So what did we do differently? So it's returning false, which is good. That means that it's working. Now we have collection. Oh, whoopsies. We did the same mistake that we did before. Apparently I don't work. And then down here. So our logic was right. Uh, our syntax was wrong, basically. So we just have to go and fi fix it like we did before. Let's go to run this. Son of a bitch. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so test false. Why did I use it? It's it shouldn't matter, but it seems to be affecting it differently. Back to square one. Is that what's going on here? Yeah, see, it returns undefined. That's why we're not doing it because we're using we're going to use bracket notation. However, this returns a correct statement. It says. Uh, maybe there's something wrong with our if statement. So saying, hey, uh, if prop isn't tracks, okay, and the value isn't empty, okay. Update or set value for the record album. Update or set the value for the record album. I feel like this. Oh, maybe I misunderstood what it was asking. It's not push. It would be... All right, so update. So the value we're passing in is ABBA. So it will. So you would set it. If the prop is tracks but the album doesn't have a tracks property create an empty array before adding the new value to the corresponding array. you know i remember having this same fucking issue when i was on this one this is what pisses me off more than anything this was here like a year ago doing this stuff and i hit this stupid one and it fucking 
fucks me up then too. Um, all right, so if prop is tracks, oh wait, no. If prop isn't tracks and value isn't empty, update or set the value for the record albums property. Oh fuck, that is I did fuck that up. If prop isn't tracks and the value isn't empty, yeah, you're right. I didn't I fuck that one up. <laughs> and so, uh, update or set the value for the record albums property. All right, so here we go. Uh, so we're actually updating the album. Yeah. All right, good catch, baby. So we'll say collection ID dot album equals value. Property. Oh. Dot prop. Ah, I get it now. Ha ha! Alright. We got the first one. Alright. So we're setting the value for this property. Now, if it is... If it is tracks, we want to do our other things. So we'll have an else if here. Else if... Prop. Is equal to, wait, is there anything else we're saying? Go up so they can read it. I'll do else. Else. Else, it's the array because we're setting it for everything else. All we care is that it's not tracks. If it's if it is tracks, we want to go ahead and add it. Are any good uh, Angular videos going to be re recorded soon? Yeah. Uh, pretty soon, man. I, I've just been a little busy with this hundred days of fucking tutoring. No, uh, <laughs> I love to do so much. Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff coming up pretty soon, Jordan. Um, I'll have, I have about ten, I record like a video every day to, um, to get this, that stuff coming out. So don't, don't sweat it, man. Uh, I just haven't been able to release anything this week. Um, okay, so remember what we did here. What we did, what we're, what this first if statement's for is to set the key value pairs. Now, in this, that aren't arrays. Now we're going to go ahead and push a, arrays, and so we have an else statement that says if um, collection. The, now, how do we target the collection with the ID that we're passing in, and then we're going to say dot tracks so if that exists oops if that exists we just want to go ahead and push to that array let's say collection id dot push and what are we, uh, dot tracks excuse me dot tracks dot push and we'll push the value to it all right now um Remember, we had that issue where it didn't exist. So we can do an else here. And in this case, we'll say collection ID dot tracks is equal to an empty array. And then we'll go ahead and say collection ID dot tracks. It says push. if value is empty, delete the given property from the album. Okay, so we'll, we would we'll, we'll have another thing in there as well. Uh, value. All right, and then we'll say, um, so if prop is tracks and value is an empty, push the value onto the end of the album's existing tracks. Right, cool. And if value is empty, delete the given property name. All right, cool. So. Before we do any of this, we'll just throw an if statement that says, okay, if, and we can make this an else if. If value is equal equal to an empty string, collection ID, Prop. And do you remember how we delete them? With the delete 
keyword. All right, baby. God damn it. <laughs> All right, so we're getting there, though. We're knocking it out piece by piece. So artist should not be set. Matter of fact, artist should be deleted, right? So what? Go up. You don't even read these things. Go up, go up. Wait, let me read what we're getting. Uh, artist should be ABBA. Oh. <laughs> I fucked my code up. So if value is equal to... So if value is empty, we want to delete that collection. So what I have to do now, baby, is I have to fix my logic. So we go, we're going to go piece by piece. Let's just start checking off these bad boys. So this one... What happens when we do this? So if value is empty, delete the given prop from the album. not cheating off of you in in chat right now man stop trying to give us the answers oh shit so yeah you're right you're right damn it i should have looked at chat i would figure it out on my own so I made the same mistake I made a second ago where I wasn't using the the uh, bracket notation like I needed to. <laughs> Who's this? You got this one key. Alright. So let's change our code. Um, I'm used to, uh, unfortunately, so JSON and you'll, you'll be working more with JSON than, than um, Oops. With uh, JavaScript ob object notation, then you will be objects. And they'll look very similar, but they are not. Which is why uh, some of my code didn't work. So, uh, what happens when we run this one? So, we're almost there. Uh, Okay, I see what's going on here. So there's one last test case where um, we don't want to push a value if uh, in case because it's not a key value pair, James. It is it's still a key value pair. It's part of an object though. It's not part of a JSON. That's, so you have to pass it in as a string to define it. Typically, when you're working in web development, uh, you'll more so. It's, it's feeling pretty nice. You'll. Uh, you'll more so be working with JSONs than than um, JavaScript objects. They are different. They're gonna look very similar though. Uh, and I, I had a brain fart here. Thank you to Dean. Showed me the errors of my ways here. Um, all right. So uh, last thing we have to do is just check if uh, value is not equal equal to an empty one we don't want to push an empty value to it and then we pass everything so this is a, actually a really good example of motherfucker <laughs> all right so console.log collection ID at the end here. Uh, 
Maybe it doesn't want us to add tracks. Maybe that would be what it doesn't want us to do. There we go. All right. Um, all right, so this is a good example to show you where, you know, I kind of fumbled about a bit, not a big deal, but this is a, a good thing for you to see of how one goes about kind of systematically yeah. breaking a problem down. And when you get stuck, Go, to go and start checking things piece D. by piece. <laughs> which, which is a, a another thing is like you asked. Me, so let's let's. This is a good one to end on because I I, I want to answer your question that you you asked me earlier and a lot of people will be interested by it. Um, so, um, I remember the core part of your question. What was the actual question like? What do I do? Or how well, do? Because you, because you were saying, okay, you want to go line by line, which is funny because that's not what you did there. What do you mean? Like the problem. Well, not in the problem in your code. You want to go piece no. by piece. No, just before that, you said you, you want to look at, you know, what it's asking you to do and go step by step, which is what you don't do. No, I, I read it and I saw it. Um, but then it. It intrigued me to think that okay, if you go step by step, uh, with you know what's what's being asked of you, like how in your work is asked of you step by step, like how do you plan that out? Like what does that look like? So your project, uh, when you're working on a project, um, there's something called wire. Yeah, well, first you meet with the client. The client is who tells you what they want, and then it's up to you as a developer to ask questions so that you can build them what you want. So some of the, part of the job may be that you're actually inquiring, you're getting, you're finding out what features they need and all that sort of stuff. And then you're defining, you're creating tickets. Tickets are something else. Say, hey, this is what needs to be done. And there may be documentation. Yeah, like a CRM. Yeah. Okay. And so you're, devi you're devising the best step-by-step, -step, not necessarily step-by-step, -step, but each individual piece. You're devising it the best you can and creating architecture and things like that. Now, based off that architecture, which sometimes is there, sometimes is not, uh, you are going to build it using the skill set that we have. Like the skill set in this case was we were working with JavaScript. So we need to know that, for instance, has own property. Did we use that one? Yeah. Well, we did. We did. We took it out. But that was one thing that we could use to see that it existed. Another thing that we could use, uh, in this case, we just checked the values. We needed to know that the not equal operators existed and the and operator, if and else statements and other functions. And so when my boss assigns me a task, it varies depending on the task. But if he says, Dylan, that multi-select, I'll give you an example of what I did today for a little bit. We are using a multi-select that we didn't develop. No time, no reason to. We use another multi-select. It doesn't work the way that we wanted. After you hit two clicks, it says two are selected. We want it to showcase all the values that it's selected. Okay, that's what the client wants, sure. So I'm diving, I dive into somebody else's code, I find where they set it, and now I add my own logic where now I need to overwrite their code and change it based off the skills, the, the functions I know exist. And so you're re... In this case, that's what I did. I re I refactor refact not re-engineered re is probably the better word because refactoring means you're just going back and just kind of making better and changing. Um. So I re-engineered the code that was there, and that led to other problems. So once once you make it so that it can list it, because the the engineer there decided they were going to they were going to a they all right after one two is selected, that's all I need to have. I don't need to have the value. So what happens then? is then that multi-select that takes up a set amount of space now it's going off the fucking page <laughs> <laughs> and so from there you have to take your css skills and you have to say look uh the width is set for 100 percent. makes sense it should always take up 100 percent of whatever the div is but there's also a min width and then there's a max width and the max width will continue growing and so you then go into the css and you set the max width and you say all right cool um, that, that, there couldn't be any more problems. Okay, there are though. So, so the next thing you have to do is you have to set it so that 
you you do you go back and you test right you go piece by piece i was like okay i think i know where to look i go and i do it i, I use this i use the tool set i have to to work on it from there I go back each change I test it see what could break because a lot of these things don't occur to you it doesn't occur to me that after I change this that it's going to max expand in indefinitely right or the next error that would happen where now the text where now remember I change it from being too selected to say um, um, the name one name two name three name four now name one name two name name three name four indefinitely expanding but the button or the drop down stay in the same. So then I have to go and uh, hide the overflow in the CSS. Mm -hmm. And so this, you know, all these sorts of things. But when, when my boss says, we're building a new project, what's, what's the goal? Yeah. What's, and you d you d what you do is you define user stories. What is it that the user wants to do? And then based off what the user wants to do, you start saying, what do we need to do that? And then from there, you, sit, you start breaking it down so and as individual pieces when i say the user wants to be able to upload photos and get those photos what does that entail and then you start breaking it down piece by piece and so you, that's where the programmer comes in yeah and and there's a there, it's up to your discretion it's not like laid out uh it will it could be at larger companies but at a smaller team like myself you are quality assurance i'm also doing testing you are doing front end you're doing back end you're doing database design you're doing uh arch which is also architecture you're doing wireframing where you're actually making visual representations because the reason you do wireframing is not only so that you can show the client hey this is what we want to build for you uh based off our conversation because in their mind uh where the where things don't link their mind has magically linked it so that it makes sense so you have to actually take their idea and physically manifest it in a picture and say, this is what you told me, this is what you want. And then you have to wait for them to actually sit down for a second, take a deep breath and say, say, shit, that doesn't work, does it? No, uh, it cannot be heads and tails. This is why, right? Yeah. And so based off that, they change their, you start working out the kinks that they as developers can't. So you wireframe it out. And and you know you have user flow charts and things like that that are similar but you build it into a picture and from that picture you look at the picture you start thinking and this, there's a reason you do that and this is based off the requirements the requirements are the things that the clients are supposed to give you but never do and so you have to keep pulling and pulling and, and, and going back for the data and because they, they haven't fully figured it out they just know they want it right and this is what they wanted to do that they're not engineers they're not developers so you make a picture of it. From that picture, and from you working through it, you'll see, okay, I have an add button here to add a document. So now I need to save the document. And what does that entail? Well, it entails a database. It entails data types. It entails primary keys. It entails a way for them to save. It entails a way for them to delete. It entails a way for them to update and to add. So you have four things right there you have to add program in the background, in the back end. And so based off that, it really depends on what task you're on. You start breaking it down piece by piece by piece, starting with the conversation with the client to putting in pictures, what the wireframes, what the client wants, to sending the wireframes to the client, explaining your thought process about their thought process and whether you were right. And from there, um, you know, shooting back and forth between the senior developer and whoever else is doing it and a larger company someone may be doing each one of these tasks piece by piece by piece. Weather is trying to take over the chat. He's like, that's cool, man. All right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what is the best place to learn Angular? Code Academy has a Angular course. And uh, I have a couple on my channel where I right, had enough cools, man. Cool story, bro. <laughs> We'll put you on timeout. <laughs> Too many cool. Um, so, um, what do I use for wireframing? I use a program called Balsamic. Uh, balsamic? Like yeah. balsamic vinegar? With the IQ, yeah. Uh, am I going to learn Angular 2? I am, man. Um, right now, uh, 
when my finger so I haven't actually been doing any coding after work I've been working on side projects and things like that in in YouTube and and um, some graphic design and stuff like that for an upcoming uh, store that I'm going to be releasing but um and, and tutoring with April so I haven't been able to dive into angular 2 but first I'm going to finish up node I'm going to finish up uh, express MongoDB mongoose all the back-end uh, projects the full stack mean ones and then I'm going to dive into angular 2 or react um, I haven't fully decided but uh, one of the two store yes a developer store where you can buy stickers, you can buy mugs, you can buy posters, um, mouse pads, and uh, I imagine eventually clothes as well. Um, my 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 view for this is to start off very very easy in terms of um, I have a graphic designer that I've worked with for a while. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him as long as I've known Engineer Truth, which is over 20 years, and we've worked on stuff together. And so I'm I'm going to pay him a uh, percent of the profits and then we're going to do that but um so you'll you'll see posters you'll basically get a t-shirt with my face on it yeah I, it, basically face. things for you to keep motivated there, there's also going to be cheat sheets that are laminated so for like you know five bucks you can get a cheat sheet that's going to have all the javascript functions on it all the angular directives all that sort of stuff so that um i'm gonna be buying one of those can i donate you some free merch there will be some free merch giveaways on occasion not too often, and definitely Patreon uh, subscribers will get a a uh, discount when the store goes live. I would say expect about. Uh, I probably won't launch it till after we move. Would I do a loot box? It's funny how you are on the same page as me, James Scott. There is also going to be a potential once we get some inventory, a potential maybe like twenty dollar a month sort of. Uh, coding box sort of imagine loot crate style where every month I give you various things um, for people who are in the $20 range where I will send you you know stickers maybe a shirt if... oh man we're gonna look for coding shit and put that stuff in there yeah so I, I have a I do have a game plan um, and between the Facebook group and the um... like you guys get like a little coding like keychain thing that'd be cool like a metal on the brass ones that they have. Yeah, so you'll see a lot of coding related stuff. And there's I mean there's a lot of reasons for it. I one, I like to make money and two, I think it's a <laughs> it's a good idea and I'm passionate about it. And I think I think a, a lot of you guys would like it. For me, I stay motivated by having this stuff all in my face, the posters, the YouTube channel, all that. Um yeah, you can email me about it. Right here, I'll type my email in it in chat. Um But um, but yeah. So let's uh enough about the the store that doesn't exist yet, uh, but is on its way. Um, probably I would say two months we'll do a launch. We're moving in a month, and then I would say two weeks after that I'll probably order the stuff, and so I'll probably drop some money getting some some pre-made stuff, and then uh, a month after about two weeks to a month after that uh we'll do a launch party, all that sort of stuff, all that fun stuff. Um. But uh, do you, do you kind of get back to the main point? Do you kind of get what I do? Like, there's not instructions when you're a developer. There are guides. User stories, and then it's out to which the you developer. Write. Yeah. To figure out how to implement it. Yeah, kind of set those. Um, what were you saying? It was how to meet those requirements, maybe. Is what no. you're trying to say? Like how when I said it was, it's like a CRM. Oh, a ticket. So a ticket yeah. based. So that I understand because that makes a lot of sense. So like you, okay, okay. So you have your user story, and based on your user story, you can create those tickets and where you're at, and then you can framework it all, show the client that, and kind of bash back and forth. Yeah, okay. So that all makes sense. Good. You suck at breaking down problems? Hey, man, it, it gets easier the more experience you get. I'm actually really bad at algorithms. I'm really uh, good at breaking down problems, but we'll see how good I am at breaking down coding problems. So uh, it just takes practice to, to get there. Uh, I haven't put in the practice with algorithms, unfortunately, just because my mind is all over the place with 
a lot of things. And so, uh, yeah, it is. It's like this. This is a physical representation of Dylan's head. So, uh, this is a good question to end on. Um, David Yang says, April, other than Dylan, what's been a good source for your learning and retention knowledge? So, I've been looking at, what was that one? School 3. I think it's called School 3. I've never heard of what you're talking Maybe about. Maybe it's not called that. Um... Oh, W3 Schools? Yeah, W3 okay. Schools. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, W3 Schools, I been I go to their webpage a lot. I look through a lot of their examples. Um, really helps internalize it. I actually look a lot of on, um, like, e-books. So, like, I, tried, I was trying to find a book, but fortunately, Godless Monkey bought me a book. So I'll have a book to start reading. I'm really excited about that because... I know reading and being able to mark a book up kind of helps me internalize that. So, um, and then doing it so much doesn't, I don't know if it's helping me internalize it, but I know it is frustrating me. Back to David's question, um, I'm, I get frustrated by the code because what I think is in my head that I'm trying to apply uh, to my code isn't working and it like oh it's working in my brain but it's not working here so apparently something's wrong um, and it's finding out what I'm missing here so that I can put it here and I just don't have the knowledge base yet to know what it is that I'm missing so I have to go and look for it or even understand what it is that I'm missing in the first place so that I can understand that I am missing something so it's it's uh it's definitely the lack of knowledge that frustrates me um, and then as for internalizing it, just listening to this, the lecture, read, going back, going back over my notes, writing my own notes, uh, going through multiple examples of it on other websites, that is actually all helping me very slowly. I'm going to be making some flashcards or cheat sheets or whatever to kind of help me do that. And then again, I'm going to have the book. So hopefully combination of all those things will really help me uh, internalize it more and I think I just need more information so um, and I'll say this that was supposed to be the last question but in terms of Traversy Media there are three channels guys that I go to for coding tutorials uh, one is the new Boston uh, two is Derek Bonas and my new recent favorite is uh, Traversy Media if you're not already following all three of those and you're trying to be a developer and you want good resources, Derek Bonas and Traversy Media are two of my favorites and New Boston just because there's so much content. You gotta give it to the to the guy. But um What are you talking about? Of uh, YouTubers that do coding tutorials. Oh. Those are my three favorite. Um Traversy Media is probably my my newest favorite, to be honest with you. Because he's uploading constantly, he's in the middle of the grind. The other guys are sitting back and the and watching their their checks come in uh, so I definitely encourage you to follow uh, all three of those I actually was talking about that today um, all right baby you wanna you wanna lead us out I want to talk more but sure I'll <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk more you talk more no I just said you because I was reading uh, David David's comment and Russ and stuff and I, maybe that's something that we can look at, like for me, it's the lack of knowledge that's expressed to me. Like, I love free code camp, and yes, it's helping me learn. But there's, and I can understand that they want to kind of keep it simple because too much information can be too much. It can, um, well, I mean, take take this problem, for instance, the record one. Do you, how long, you saw me kind of mess around with it for, what, 20 minutes? Mm -hmm. This to put, could do you think you would have been able to do put this all together in an afternoon on your own? In an afternoon, what's an afternoon like a whole day afternoon? Yeah, you think you could solve this without looking up the solution? Uh, just no, by no, absolutely not without looking up the solution. And that's part of my issue with it is that they give me this task with not enough information that I have to go and look for well, that they, information. But that's part of their process of teaching you. Mm -hmm. But in my my point of teaching someone is 
I think that maybe someone should have I would have set this whole learning scale up differently. Like if I ran my own free code camp program, it would be set very differently because there are certain ways that you can lead someone into learning something. And although this may be the original stop shop of how coders used to do it, it doesn't mean that you can't change how someone learns code, how to innovatively give someone the advantage in learning code so that they can become better and faster at learning code. This does not do that for you, but you can most definitely define a program that does do that for you. And you'll have your, your book to help you with that. Hopefully that'll be a, a better way. So. so, and and the thing is, is what's great about something like a program like this is that they should, like they have the community to talk about those subjects. But it's so chaotic. I don't know if you, I've been on those community things. It's so chaotic on one of those chats that I don't even bother. So for me to have like an index thing to go to on free code camp about terms or things that, things that they have that reach out to maybe YouTubers that link on that subject or something like that. Something a little bit more organized, I think would be sufficient for me <laughs> and maybe other people but I, I just I, don't know, I appreciate the free education I do 100% but if I ever get a chance to rebuild something yeah because this is not how people learn <laughs> I mean this is this is how people can learn I'm not saying that you can't learn from this what I'm saying is is that it can be better taught to be better learned yeah, everybody learns differently. Absolutely, but you give someone an organized process of something, they can pick and pull a piece of everything that they need on how they learn. If you give them those options that are organized, there won't be all this chaotic, I have no idea where the fuck I am, understanding syntax, blah, blah, blah. You would have be able to help yourself pinpoint the deficiencies within an organized program. That's all I'm saying. All right. Uh, all right. So. Um, yeah, getting paid while I learn that would be the best. <laughs> Imagine this is a boot camp like with eight hour days. Hey man, if I make enough money, <laughs> let's say free, let's say coding tutorial three sixties YouTube channel is making, uh, I don't know, hundred k. I'd be out here doing eight hour days. I could do it. Hey, exactly. That's my point, uh, Graham, Graham, Graham? Graham Gilmore. Graham Gilmore. That's exactly my point, is that you can be taught on how to look for your answers. And when you are taught to look for your answers, you can be more efficient in learning what you're deficient in. And that doesn't do this for you. And that's part of my issue with it. You'll get there though, because it, it so far we haven't. So far, all we've done is is learn syntax. But oh yeah, no, I'm I'm not saying that I'm not far enough into it that I you know, and I understand. I'm what I'm saying is I understand their basis, where they're coming from, how they want their code to set up, how it's been done, how it's going, how people learn from it. Like I'm not saying that it's wrong. I'm saying there are different ways of learning. There are different ways of systems being set up to help people learn. All right, uh, so I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I have to get working on those side hustles so that I can get my shit up and running. Uh, Google is the best coding tool. <laughs> yeah, Russ, have you seen their new coding uh, course? I, I haven't checked it out yet, but it's definitely on my to-do list. <laughs> yeah, 50% of the time, Googling for a solution. <laughs> Google's more organized. <laughs> I just want to be chatty Kathy then. Like, I don't want to go. I want to keep talking to everybody. It's so nice. <laughs> uh, all right. So um, so if you guys want to support me and Cam, we're trying to raise uh, money for to get upgrade the webcam and the monitor to 4K so that we can do screen shares in 4K. Um, that's appreciated. You can do that through donating or through Patreon. 
And um, if you if you don't want to do that or uh, or you do want to do that, make sure you also join the Facebook group, Cotech and Caffeine. The link is in the description below. <laughs> Just like that, uh, I I and our cats appreciate you being here. I'll see you guys tomorrow for day eleven. We are ten percent of the way through, a hundred days of code. Which is, I think, a, a strong commitment. I think uh, we've had a strong start to think that it's only been 10 days. And here you are working on the portfolio. And soon when you get that, you'll be diving into this stuff. And that's when it gets exciting. Oh, man, I'm scared. Yeah. I'm scared. So you want you want to you wanna get us out or should I do it? You do it because I did it last time. All right, all right. Do it with the nasty finger. <laughs> Code long and prosper.